Okay, so when I went into labor on a Wednesday night, I did not panic when I was still in labor Friday morning. <laughs> That's when I panicked. And then the nurse panicked, and then the doctor panicked. Um, so when I got pregnant, I decided that um, I was never going to do an unmedicated birth. That just wasn't me. But I had hoped to um, avoid a cesarean. Um, not that there's anything wrong with cesareans. It's just personal preference here. Um, and so we uh, hired a doula, and we talked about a birth plan, which basically was labor at home as long as possible, avoid an epidural for as long as possible, and don't have a cesarean. Um, so what I didn't count on was a misplaced epidural. Um, so I don't know how much you know about epidurals, but the idea is that they um, insert something into your spine, leave it there, and it numbs you from the chest down. Um, my epidural was placed in a way that it numbed the left side of my body and not the right side. Um, and the nurse on duty on Thursday night, when we got to the hospital, 28 hours into my labor, um, instead of removing and replacing the epidural, just up the dosage. So by midnight on Thursday, I had enough drugs in my body to numb an elephant, but I could still feel everything that was happening on the right side of my body. Um, it, was not, it was not something I counted on. Um, and about mm, 34 four hours into labor, I hit the panic switch, I begged for a C-section. And when I say I begged for a C-section, I basically screamed at anyone who would listen to me to please take the baby out of me now. Um, so the doula, who was wonderful, pulled my husband aside and said, um, a C-section is not medically necessary. No one is going to do that for her at this point. She needs to get the baby out on her own and you need to help her. It's the conversation they had in the bathroom. Um, so they <laughs> came, and I'm thinking, where are they? I'm screaming at people to give me a C-section, and they disappeared. Um, when they came out of the bathroom, my husband came over to me and said, remember when the Steelers won the Super Bowl? <laughs> and James Harrison, th that was that interception, and he ran for 100 yards and scored a touchdown? He didn't think he could do that, but not doing it wasn't an option, so he did it. <laughs> and I need to interrupt myself right now to explain that you're probably all thinking, what a dumb guy brings up a sports metaphor 34 hours into his wife's labor. And here's where I get to tell you that the Steelers are my team. And James Harrison is my guy. And when the Steelers had won the Super Bowl in January of that year, it was one of the few shining moments of an otherwise horrible pregnancy. So he said the right thing. And I, I, I locked in. And I was like, hmm. But it wasn't James Harrison I was locked in on at that moment. It was Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> ben Roethlisberger is the Steelers quarterback. Um, the Steelers had been leading for most of the game. Uh, James Harrison made that amazing interception and touchdown run at the end of the second quarter. But by the end of the fourth quarter, the Cardinals were about to score a touchdown that would put them ahead. And I'm rolling around on my living room floor, screaming at my husband and my brother, why are they doing this to me? And Ben Roethlisberger is on the sidelines looking completely unconcerned. The camera's following him. The Cardinals are marching down the field, and he's like, mm, yeah, mm hmm And I'm rolling around four months pregnant on my living room floor. And so I'm thinking about Ben Roethlisberger and how unconcerned he was, and I'm thinking, well, maybe he knows his defense is so good that it's all going to be okay. And my husband says, well, maybe he thinks it's the end of the third quarter, not the end of the fourth quarter. But whatever it was, that was the face I locked in on 34 hours into my labor. And I thought, Ben Roethlisberger, on the sidelines, not calling the plays, just waiting for his turn to go in, I am in more control of this situation than Ben Roethlisberger was of that situation. I got this. And so 
they turned off my epidural probably several hours earlier, and by the time we're hitting 34 hours, I have no drugs in my system whatsoever, and I decide to get this baby out of me, except no one told the doctor who was not in the room. So after another hour of pushing, which puts us at a total of 35 hours of labor, I have what's called a spontaneous birth, which means no one was there to catch the baby. I now have a human halfway out of me. I have no drugs in my system. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, get her out of me, get her out of me. The nurse, who should have caught the baby, runs out of the room to find the doctor, who then comes running in the room, screaming, where are my gloves? I need size seven gloves. Where are my gloves? Where are my size seven gloves? And I'm screaming, get the child out of me. And so that's the story of how every single person who shouldn't have panicked, panicked, except my daughter, who, through the entire 35 hours of labor, never once showed a single sign of distress, although she does have a tendency for the dramatic.